Welcome to r slash Am I the Jerk, where Karen makes a huge deal over 25 cents. Am I the jerk for calling my friend stingy because she asked someone to Venmo her 25 cents? Anytime money is exchanged or she pays for something, Nadine will immediately Venmo request us for the exact amount we owe. If she doesn't immediately, then she does it pretty much soon after, like maybe a day or so. None of my other friends are like this. It's usually, I got lunch, can you get the coffee? Or, I got drinks last night, can you do dinner tonight? And it's always been fine before. Most of my friends and I are in the same income bracket, and Nadine actually makes a little bit more than me, maybe like 2000 a year or so, so it's not like she's rich or anything. Well, last week, me, Nadine, and Chloe were at a used bookstore. Chloe and Nadine had gone out and gotten coffee before, and Chloe said she'd pay Nadine back. Nadine wanted a book that we saw there that was about $2.50 or something, so Chloe said she would get the book to pay her back for the coffee. Nadine said, Okay, and then you can Venmo me the rest. <laughs> the rest was 25 cents, not even a dollar. I said, Are you serious right now? It's 25 cents. Nadine was in fact being serious and said it's 25 cents that she owes her and she'd like to be paid back. Chloe and I locked eyes for a second and Nadine saw and said that we're not entitled to her hard-earned money. I said no, of course we're not entitled to her money, but this is 25 cents between friends and none of my other friends would do this. It's not like we're running up a tab, but it's just how friendship works and that it makes her seem kind of stingy. I brought up how a while ago she asked if I wanted to split sandwiches with her because they both sounded good and I agreed and she said that I had to pay her $1.50 since her sandwich was like $3 more than mine. Nadine got super defensive and said again that she works hard for her money and she doesn't just give it away, and if we have a problem with that, too bad. This whole thing has just left a bad taste in my mouth. I've never had a friendship like this. Money has always just passed between friends without issue. And for me personally, while I don't do this and none of my friends really do, even if someone who made less money than me didn't pay me back for some things, I wouldn't chase them down. But am I the jerk, and was I wrong to say something to her about it? I'm so close to not the jerk, but I'm going to have to say no jerks here. Nadine sounds like a friend I would not want to be around. She sounds like a real pain, but it sounds like she's consistent and there's probably some strong reasons why she's like this. Someone that stingy and money conscious might have had bad experiences in the past. You can choose to distance yourself from Nadine, I would, or decide to limit the number of times that you engage with her on anything related to money. Despite my distaste for someone that preoccupied with small sums of money, I don't think anyone is in the wrong here. Nadine was owed money, however small the sum, and is entitled to ask to be made whole. Why do you bother sharing costs if settling up afterwards is such drama? Just stop consolidating your bills and this problem goes away. No, Nadine. Buy your own stuff and I'll buy mine. No jerks here. She's consistent. She asks every time, so it's a personality thing. She's not even thinking about the moment, just that there is some. I have a friend that pulls out the calculator every time there's a check so everyone knows what they owe to the penny and the tip is exact. Just realize that's who she is. I don't think you're wrong for talking to her about it. Friends should be able to talk to each other. Just don't call each other names. Personally, I'm more like you. As long as you're close, it usually evens out after so many years. Not the jerk. This is ridiculous. Just don't do anything involving split money with her anymore. When you go out to eat with friends, she gets her own check and everyone else splits. When she asks to split sandwiches, just say no. Don't do anything involving split money with her whatsoever. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or Nadine? Please let us know. Bruh, it's a quarter. My wife got promoted again and now the income from my career doesn't matter. My wife and I have been together for over 25 years. She's been working her way up the corporate ladder almost the entire time and I've been towing the line as a teacher, with my real job being to take care of our own kids and house so she could focus on her career. And it's paid off big time. For the last several years, she's been a department head in charge of 85 to 120 people from across the world. She zooms with them all day and checks their work. For this, she makes 310,000 plus bonuses. Meanwhile, over the same time period, my income has gone from 38K to 55K. My bonus each year is usually 100 to 200 in Starbucks gift cards from the parents. On Monday, my wife got called into the big office for a talk with her boss. She's getting promoted. She was four promotions away from CEO. Now she's three promotions away. Her raise is more than my annual salary. Her bonuses will now be twice per year 
not just at Christmas, and both will be larger than my annual salary. Her new position starts next Monday. The paycheck should reflect it mid-June. For years, my income has just been going into our retirement account anyway, but that's already bloated. My continuing to contribute to it is like adding drops of water to a swimming pool. It's inconsequential. I enjoy my job, but it all feels so pointless now, and my domestic responsibilities are also dwindling. We've hired a housekeeper. Two of my kids are grown. The third one is a teenager and doesn't need much from me anymore besides money. I'm only in my 40s and already feel like I'm done with everything I'm supposed to do in life. I don't want to retire yet, though. Even if the money I make from teaching is inconsequential, at least it gives me a reason to wake up some days. Edit. Since this seems to be blowing up, here's some information you may find interesting. I teach at a small school in an affluent community with a ton of parental support. My job is incredibly easy. Most of my students are above grade level and eager to learn. My largest class is just 22 students. I'm not one of those teachers who hates their job and has to deal with crap from students all day. Also, my wife has anxiety issues and struggles to sleep without me beside her. I literally have to be touching her back for her to fall asleep properly. We haven't been apart for a single night in at least a decade because of this, so I suppose I will always serve that purpose in our relationship. I know you may feel obsolete, but this could be a great opportunity for you if you look at it from a glass half full. You have an opportunity many people dream of. You can continue supporting your wife's success, but you now have the ability to pursue anything you dream of. Continue teaching if you wish. Always wanted to be a principal? Go for it. Want to try your hand in construction? You've got the time. Want to learn a new language? Take classes? You can do anything you want now. Because I'm sure your wife and kids would love to see you thrive. You may not be the breadwinner, but you are the backbone that made your family's success possible. You've done a selfless thing here, and it's hard watching everyone make it and you still feel stuck. But sir, you have exceeded expectations here. Be proud. Now, make time for you. You deserve it. Dude, I would do anything to be in your position. Give up teaching. Volunteer full-time at a charity for a cause that's close to you. Go into politics. Figure out what kind of hobbies could make you feel like you're achieving something. Not sitting and gaming every day, but building something. Or exercising, etc. Or stay in teaching, where you can be the most refreshed and attentive teacher the kids will see in the day because you are the one that's not getting gray hairs at 20 from counting the pennies in your account. Am I the jerk for telling my wife her family needs to get a hotel next time if they visit because of their kids? My wife, who's 36, and I, 35 male, have been married for 7 years and we have a 5-year-old son. My wife has 4 siblings, 2 brothers and 2 sisters. Her brothers live far away and she isn't very close to them. Both her sisters live within 2 hours of us and the 3 of them are very close. Both of her sisters have 2 kids. Her youngest sister, Jen, who's 25, has a 3-year-old and a 1-year-old. Jen, her husband, and their kids came to visit us this past weekend for Memorial Day. We have three bedrooms in our house, our master, our son's room, and a smaller guest room. My wife decided on her own that we would let Jen and her family have our bedroom. Apparently, Jen's kids aren't the best sleepers at home, and if they're in an unfamiliar place, it's even worse. So, my wife offered Jen our room so all of them can be in one room, and my wife and I would sleep in the guest room. Turns out that by bad sleepers, Jen meant that her kids wake up multiple times a night and then they wake up for good at 5 a.m. every single day. I don't know about anyone else, but the last thing I want to do on a weekend is be woken up by a screaming baby at 5 a.m. three days in a row. It wasn't just the baby crying, but the fact that Jen and her husband would also be running around getting whatever the baby needed. The commotion woke up our son, who then woke my wife and I up. Every day at 5 a.m. I spent the entire weekend tired and cranky. To make things worse, Jen and her husband would take naps together whenever one of their kids was napping, which left my wife and I to watch their non-napping kid. I complained to my wife about being tired and she told me that her sister and brother-in-law need the rest more than we do because this is their life every day, so we should help them get at least a little bit of a break. But by the time Jen and her family left on Monday, all I wanted to do was sleep, which I did immediately after they left. My wife got upset with me for napping because our son was also tired and cranky and was fighting her on everything. She woke me up so that she could take a break. I later told her that next time her sister wants to come visit, they need to get a hotel because their kids' sleeping habits are clearly disruptive to our entire family. She told me that she isn't going to tell her sister to fork out hundreds for a hotel room when we have the space for them in our house. She also said that Jen's kids will become better sleepers as they get older. I told her that every decision she's making prioritizes her sister over me and our son, 
and she got defensive and told me I'm being a jerk. Maybe I'm far enough removed from the baby stage that I've blocked it out, but I don't remember ever being so disruptive to anyone when we were guests in their house. They're supposed to come visit us again for the 4th of July, and I'm already dreading it. Not the jerk. If they live less than two hours away, they don't really need to be staying multiple nights so often. If your wife insists on playing babysitter for her sister, then 4th of July sounds like a great weekend for you and your son to go visit your family or friends. Not the jerk. Your wife shouldn't make the decision to invite them and offer up your bedroom without your agreement, and you need to insist that her dictatorship ends. But if she chooses to do so, she certainly shouldn't expect you to babysit her non-sleeping kid or deal with your cranky kid when she brought these things on herself. I'd insist that they get a hotel room and that if not, you'll get your own hotel room. Failing that, I'd either find a different place to crash or refuse to leave your room when they're there. Your wife doesn't get to volunteer you or your property without your agreement. And frankly, people who want to make their own decisions don't need to be married and you don't deserve to be married to someone who ignores your wishes and sacrifices your well-being and the well-being of your kid to benefit her sister. You're the jerk. You're a grown man. You really can't suck it up for one weekend, probably not even a full 48 hours, so your wife can spend some quality time with her and your close family? Seriously? Every commenter saying not the jerk is just as self-centered as you are. Try putting someone else's needs first once in a while. Am I the jerk for tricking my brother into selling me his half of our childhood home, then demolishing it? My mom and dad divorced when I was young. My brother loved the fact that our mom had no rules for him, so he went with her. I abided by the custody agreement because I had no choice in the matter. My mom loves us both, but she dotes on my brother. My dad kept the house. He had to buy my mom out. It was an old house built in 1953. It had old wiring and was really less than suitable for modern life. What it did have, though, was a huge yard that was great growing up. My dad passed during lockdown. He left everything equally between my brother and I. I wanted the house. I told my brother that we should tear it down and put in infill housing, like that neighborhood is zoned for. He just wanted money. I bought out his half of the house at the market value. It was sold as a teardown. He took the money and bought a car and went on a vacation. He still has money left. Then I had the house demolished and built a fourplex. Each unit has three bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms, a small yard, and a garage. I kept one unit for myself and ran to each of the other units out for $2,000 a month. My mortgage is $1,800 a month for the entire thing, so basically I live free and bank $4,000 a month. My brother's upset that I didn't give him a unit to live in since it was his home too. I actually offered to sell him one at cost and he said no. I'm lost. I offered him a partnership. I paid a fair price. I offered to sell him a unit. I did everything to try and be fair. He thinks I tricked him because I get free money every month. Our mom said she would be cutting me out of her will and giving everything to him if I don't give him a unit or the income from one. I agreed that was fair and said that I would no longer feel the need to contribute to her upkeep or retirement when the time came. I'm being bombarded by the two of them now, but I took the risks. I took on the debt. This is my money now. Not the jerk. You paid his half of the house. You paid him. He wanted the money. His share of the money was spent buying cars and going on holiday. Your share of the money was spent investing. He's just upset and bitter because he made bad choices and you made better choices and now he's acting like he's entitled to your good decisions because he's your brother. Also, mom is in the wrong for the heavy and outright blackmail ultimatum that she put on you. Money really does bring out the bad in people. You're the jerk for becoming a landlord. So, leaving the house that didn't provide a home to anyone would have been better than tearing it down and creating four living spaces? OP did a good thing. OP would be doing a good thing if he didn't charge $2,000 for each unit. While I'm typically pretty anti-landlord, there's not anything that I can fault OP for. They took a single family home, tore it down, and in its place put a fourplex. We need higher density housing, so while it's not an apartment complex, it is more efficient use of the land. In this case, the housing exists specifically because OP sought to have it built. Buying a house with the intent of just renting it out feels several times worse than creating more housing and managing it. Situationally, not the jerk, but as a landlord, automatically, you're the jerk. You kind of lost my sympathy once you outed yourself as a landlord. I can't stand when people tear down historic houses just to turn them into rentals, so I have to go with you're the jerk. All landlords are jerks. 
you're the jerk. But only because you're a landlord. <laughs> dad stole my identity and opened three credit cards in my name. I found my dad used my information to open three credit cards over the last year. When I went to get a pre-approval for a mortgage, I was told by the lender they wouldn't be able to give me a home loan because of the defaulted credit cards. They also said I probably wouldn't be able to get a loan from any lender because of it, and they gave me a sheet of paper explaining what I'd need to do in order to fix it. When I tried disputing the cards, one of which is already in collections, the disputes got closed out as the debts were verified. I told my divorced parents about it, and their answers were pretty wildly different. My dad said that these things happen, and that I should be more careful in the future with my social security number. Seeing as I've always been careful, that made me pretty mad. My mom said she thinks my dad might have something to do with it, since him opening credit cards in her name had a part to play in their divorce. She told me he ran up about $50,000 in credit card debt on secret credit cards. A few days ago, I ended up casually telling my dad I'm going to have to file a police report for the credit cards. He told me I probably shouldn't do that because $15,000 isn't that much in the grand scheme of things. When I told him it was keeping me from buying a house, he said I could just wait a few years until they fell off my credit report. He said it would only take another four and a half years. When I told him I obviously couldn't wait that long, so I have to file the police report, he straight up told me not to do it and to just be more careful in the future. <laughs> Once I told him I already got the paperwork together from the credit agencies, he told me he had opened the cards to pay for living expenses over the last year. He said his work slowed down a bit, but he'd do what he could to help pay it off. He said it would ruin his life if he went to jail. I'm leaning towards going to the police anyway, but I didn't write in that minute. I have everything in front of me today to go make the report. I guess I just want to make sure turning it over to the police is the right thing to do here, especially if I'm wanting to buy a house this year. Update. The process itself was pretty easy. I went to the police department and the person at the front desk had me wait about 10 minutes before an officer came out. We talked for about 15 minutes and he made copies of all the paperwork I gave him. He told me the case would be assigned to a detective on Tuesday and gave me a pamphlet that had information about how to contact the credit agencies. I was given a report number and was told I could use that now to start disputing the accounts. A detective is going to follow up with me in the next couple of weeks. I asked him what would end up happening to my dad and the officer said it looked pretty clear cut to him, but the charging decision is 100% with the state attorney's office. He said if they decide to pursue legal charges, he'll likely get a warrant put out for his arrest. He also said typically if this is his first felony, he's probably going to get some sort of pretrial diversion with court supervision or probation. He probably won't go to jail for years, but if he gets picked up on a warrant, he's going to spend at least a little bit of time behind bars. I've decided I'm okay with that, because it's obvious to me he did this purposefully. He's never been arrested before, so hopefully this is a wake-up call for him. At the same time, he completely did this to himself. I just found out that I have a half-sibling. I, 18 female, just found out that I have a half-sibling from my dad, and I'm in shock. My dad and mom have been happily married for over 30 years. I have a sister who is 21, but as far as I knew, she was my one and only sibling. Today, my dad asked if I could come by his office and talk to him about something serious. I didn't take it seriously because my dad will sometimes call me into his office and nag me about school or just chat with me because he misses me. From the moment I stepped into his office, I could tell something was wrong. His eyes were bloodshot as he had just finished crying and he was very quiet. He told me to take a seat and said he had something very serious to tell me. At this point, I thought that he was going to tell me that he had cancer or that someone had passed. Not even close. He proceeded to tell me that he cheated on my mom 10 years ago and he hooked up with another woman and that he has a 9-year-old daughter now, my half-sister. She lives across the country with her mother. He said that my mom already knows about everything but that he hasn't told my sister yet. My sister is very emotional, I guess you could say, so he thought that I would handle the news better than her since I'm very easygoing and I don't get upset with things. At this point, I was kind of in shock because it hadn't fully processed. He told me her name and told me that she would be coming this Sunday with her mother. He explained that they were coming so that he could sign his daughter's passport and that he would love if I could meet her and get to know her. He stressed that it's not the kid's fault at all, which I completely understand, and that he would like me to be a part of her life. He called the girl in front of me just so I could hear her voice and it absolutely broke my heart when she answered the phone and said, Hi, Daddy. That was when it definitely became a reality to me. She asked my dad when she would be able to meet her sisters, and it made me tear up a bit. I gave my dad a hug, and I told him that I would need some time to process things, but that I love him, and this doesn't change the love that I have for him. 
Things still haven't properly processed yet. I feel like it was all sprung on to me so quickly. I'm mad, sad, confused, and disgusted. I don't know what to feel. I knew my parents didn't have a perfect relationship, but this was the last thing that I expected. When told to support her mom, not her dad. OP. My dad just told me about it yesterday while my mom was at work. I haven't seen her yet since he broke the news to me. He also told me that it's a very difficult subject for my mom, which is completely understandable. So I don't know how to approach talking about it with her. I'm not supporting my dad's actions. All I did was give him a hug and tell him I still love him. Despite the news I found out, he's still my dad. Maybe it hasn't quite processed fully, but it's hard for me to accept that my dad has been so loving to me and my sister and he could do something like this to my mom. I'm upset and devastated for my mother, but my parents made the decision to stay together despite the affair. What do you want me to do? Am I supposed to go off on my dad and call him a dirty cheater? Am I supposed to encourage my mother to leave him and move out of the house? Obviously, what my dad did was wrong, but there's very little I can do now but figure out how to process, move forward, and show my support to my mother in a way that won't rub salt in the wound. Update. The woman he cheated with was from his old job, when my family still lived in a different state. You know what breaks my heart? I used to go to that job with my dad all the time, sit on his lap when he filed paperwork, say hi to everyone there. I probably even met the woman a few times. She knew my dad was married. She knew he had kids. My dad knew that he was married. My dad knew that he had kids. He said that he only has one kid with this woman and that she has another kid, a six-year-old son. He told me that the boy is under his name legally, but it's not his son by blood. I don't even know if I can believe anything he says anymore. What if he's still seeing this woman? What if that son is his? How can I believe a cheater? My mom is one of the most loving, sweetest people in the world. Her kindness and compassion make people love her almost instantly. I don't understand how or why he would cheat on the woman who loved him unconditionally. Was my mom not enough of a reason for him to stay faithful? Were my sister and I not a good enough reason for him to come home for the night? I just feel so disgusted. I texted him a series of mean messages, basically telling him that I'm disgusted and that he ruined my views of what a father is. I used to look up to him. I was so proud to have him as my dad, but now all I can feel is disgust and resentment. I will never meet his kid. I don't care. I know it's not her fault, and maybe I'm being immature, but that kid is living proof of the betrayal towards my mom. I'm not going to let my mom know that I know yet. Her health isn't the best, and I don't want her to have a heart attack from springing it onto her too suddenly. I can't be around my dad right now. I feel so unbelievably nauseous when I see him. My birthday was next week. I had things planned, but I canceled it. I'm going to be living with my aunt for a while now. My aunt has known about this for years until I can process it. My teachers are allowing me to do all my assignments online and I found cover for my job, so I should be set. Don't be pressured into meeting your half-sister. Process your feelings first before doing something you don't want to do. Also, don't believe the words of the cheater. Looks like the affair continued even after the birth of your half-sister, hence the son. Legally, that's his son and is entitled to support and inheritance. Your mother might not have known at all, or maybe she knew about the daughter but not the son. Be there for your mom. If I were you, I'd encourage her to leave your father. OP. I truly believe he's lying to me and to everyone else about the son because then it would prove the affair wasn't a one-time thing like he claims. Thankfully, my mom does know about both. A quick debrief with my aunt, her sister, not my dad's, confirmed that she had known ever since the woman was pregnant. My aunt said that my mom also suspects the son is his. The amount of child support he's paying is apparently really high. My aunt said that my mom found a piece of paperwork where he's paying for both of the kids. That communication confirms that he's continued a relationship with his mistress more than just to co-parent the girl. There's no reason for him to have contact or a relationship with her son, naming him and financially, if that wasn't his kid. If he wasn't still cheating, then he shouldn't have two kids with his name getting financial assistance from him. Any financial help he provided outside the daughter would have been taken from your family. You should definitely speak with your mother and help her if she's not gotten help. Karen demands I pay $7,000 for her wedding dress. I had an incident on my wedding day back in 2017 where my former fiancé abandoned me and ran away with his pregnant mistress. That image, those details are forever engraved in my mind and I'll never forget how I felt that day. This was truly a turning point in my life. My family always has been there for me so I kept them close. My younger sister is currently engaged and her wedding will be in a few months. She's struggling with money, so I decided to help her and her fiancé and pay for the wedding dress. 
This allowed her to be able to buy her dream wedding gown that cost $7,000. It's a lot for a dress, but she literally cried because she wanted it. This happened a few days before we agreed to go buy the dress. We were eating dinner at my parents' home and my cousin and aunt were there. My aunt was asking my sister about the wedding and my sister said that everything was going according to plan and then casually laughed and said, Let's just hope he won't run away with a pregnant mistress or something in our wedding day. I was blown away completely. She laughed and aunt laughed too as if this was some sort of a joke. She was basically mocking what happened with me and my wedding. It happened so fast I got up and started screaming at her calling her an idiot but my parents asked me to take it easy and she said it was a joke and she didn't think I'd react so intensely. My aunt remained seated and my cousin asked me to calm down and drink some water but I grabbed my stuff and as I was getting ready I told my sister she was getting zero dollars for her dream wedding dress then I walked out. I heard louder commotion as I walked and my dad and cousin followed me outside trying to talk but I asked to be left alone. My dad spoke to me saying I was too harsh over my sister's joke and said that I know this is how she is with her dark sense of humor. They said she'd been crying after I decided to back out of helping her and said this would ruin her wedding. They want me to reconsider my decision since it might damage my relationship with my sister, but I refused. Did I overreact? Info. It's my aunt that would usually bring up what happened from time to time and say stuff like, if what happened didn't happen, you would have had at least two kids by now. Or, do you know what day it is? It's your wedding anniversary. It's harsh, but she stopped doing it. Maybe my sister is still being influenced by her. It hurt the same and more coming from my own sister. She was crying over a dress. She should have been crying with remorse for how she hurt you. Not the jerk. All she cares about is her day and her dress and your wallet. Tell her to buzz off and if anyone in your family gives you crap, tell them the same. Tell them that in 10 years, if she's matured and can sincerely apologize, you might forgive her and you might consider a nice anniversary gift, if the marriage lasts that long. Not the jerk. I wish I had a dollar for every time I saw, you know how she is, on this sub. It's just the same as saying, yeah, we know what they did was wrong, but they don't listen to us, so we're going to try to guilt you into fixing this. You were under no obligation to pay for your sister's extremely expensive dress, it was a wonderful act of kindness. As thanks, your sister threw the most traumatic experience of your life in your face and laughed about it. $7,000 can buy a pretty amazing holiday, OP. You definitely deserve it. Just saying. Am I the jerk for wearing my wedding ring to my sister's wedding against her wishes and hijacking her night? My sister, 29 female, got married last Saturday. The ceremony was beautiful and I enjoyed myself as much as I could, even though I don't like weddings. The dramatics were not quite as enjoyable. I, 27 male, hadn't seen my family in a few months and we've only had a handful of phone calls over the course of these months. It's never on purpose that I pull one of these disappearing acts, it's mostly out of habit. I've been fiercely independent for most of my life and I get easily caught up in whatever I'm doing at the time that makes it hard for me to remember to keep those not in my direct line of sight in the loop. My mother is the same way. It's also nice visiting around times when big events like this are going on as my mom is prone to hovering whenever I'm home and this takes some of the spotlight off of me. I had been in Ireland around 8 months prior to flying in last Thursday. I was originally there to spend 2 weeks with my best friend who, thanks to the aforementioned one track mindness I possess, I had unfortunately grown apart from within recent years. Ours was a friendship that had started when we were 14 and was one of the most important relationships in my life for over a decade and I wanted to put more effort into it so I didn't lose it. He was spending time overseas as to reconnect with his heritage since his father's passing. I was already traveling and my stay obviously turned out to be a lot longer than two weeks. It also turned into us getting married. Funny how life works out. About two weeks before our trip to the States for my sister's wedding, I sent out a mass email to close family letting them know that me and my husband were married. I wanted to assuage any possibility of us stealing any thunder right from the get-go. My mom replied that she was hurt that she wasn't told sooner or allowed to be there, which I understood. It seemed her mood flipped by the time we met in person, however. Rehearsal dinner was on Friday and that was where we all met up for the first time. My mom was overjoyed to see me and my partner and spent a large part of the night telling stories about how she had always predicted there was something different about my friendship with him compared to others I was close with in high school. It was a very sweet moment, but at the end of the night, my sister pulled me aside 
and asked if we could not wear our wedding rings to the ceremony. I was confused, so I asked why. She said I was taking the attention off of her, and she was already bitter that I hijacked her rehearsal dinner. More family might take notice if I wore my ring tomorrow and cause a similar incident. I refused. Like I mentioned before, the ceremony was beautiful, but she didn't speak to me for the rest of the weekend and we ended up leaving the reception early. Am I the jerk? You're the jerk. You were married for three months and you chose to announce your marriage just two weeks before your sister's wedding. Then her rehearsal dinner became you and your spouse's debut, not only as a couple, but as a married couple. I don't think people's lives should be on hold, but I do think that when it comes to milestone events like a wedding, the guests of honor should have the entire spotlight to themselves and people shouldn't take away from that. You had to know that handling things this way was going to take attention away from your sister's big day. You're the jerk. Normally, asking someone not to wear their wedding ring would be a crazy request, but I actually get where your sister's coming from. You seem remarkably self-centered and thoughtless of the impact of your actions and behavior on others. How can you not think that running off to Ireland, getting married to someone you haven't seen for 14 years, and then telling everyone two weeks beforehand, despite being married for four months, wouldn't steal her thunder? Of course they are all going to be more interested in you, because what you did was insane, and so people will be wanting to talk about that. I think you know it would, and that's why you waited. Her request wasn't really the big problem, but your overall behavior is. You're the jerk. You waited until two weeks before your sister's wedding to tell your family you secretly got married to your childhood best friend in an international trip whirlwind romance four months ago. The least you can do is redirect anyone who starts making her wedding about your new marriage. Plan your own reception. Do this next. Tap here on your screen to come see our new podcast playlist where you'll find thousands of hours of the best stories you've ever heard. Or tap the one on the right. That episode is specifically just for you based on other videos you've enjoyed the most.